I went to, I went to scouts when I was a kid, and our scout leader was amazing. Our scout leader was the kind of leader that was real. I don't want to say old school, but they were very much more into the outdoorsy stuff than just collecting badges and doing sewing and shit like that. Like, he was very much an outdoorsman and wanted us to learn outdoorsman skills as well. So we would go camping and we'd go and build big things out of... Uh, we'd cut down trees. Like, they would give us axes and we would take the axes and we would cut down trees and then we would take the branches off the trees and then we would use rope to construct, like, bridges and stuff like that. Um, and what else did we construct other than bridges? Like a TP once like a tree house thing a couple of times, this kind of shit. Um, so he was pretty good. He also taught us how to catch animals. So we caught, uh, we caught rabbits a few times as well, like making snares for rabbits, which I don't think is a particularly ethical way of catching rabbits, but is, as far as I'm aware, one of the best ways of catching rabbits if you're just out on your own and don't really have any, like a, a gun or something, or a, a dog. Is a dog even better than a snare? I'm not even sure. But anyway, yeah, you just catch the rabbit in a snare and then break its neck. Um, but then also a pheasant. And I've never seen a scenario like this play out in my life before. But we were at Scouts with this guy who was much older than us. He was in between a helper and a Scout. So what does Scouts run until? I think you have to be something like 14 um, until you're too old for the Scouts. Maybe it's 15 or 16. I'm not not totally sure. I think this guy was 16 or 17. Just just general just general scouts, not cub or venture scouts. I think this guy was like 16 or 17 who used to come and help out with us. So he was a little too old, but he was good friends and he was actually pretty skilled in a bunch of different stuff and he was a fit guy, he was about to go into the army or he was aspiring to go into the army. And he would he was one of the best at being able to build all of this stuff. Obviously, he was a couple of years older than we were. And, um, and he caught a pheasant by running at it. And I've never seen anything like it before in my life. He just chased down a pheasant and grabbed it by the neck and didn't really know what to do with it once he'd caught this pheasant. And as far as I'm aware, pheasants in the UK, if they're on your land, they are considered your property or they're, re or they're fine for you to catch or something like that. I think there's some some law about that. And we decided it would be great to eat some pheasant because we'd been eating rabbit that we'd caught and stuff like that. Um, not not exclusively. We'd bought a bunch of sausages and we're cooking them on the campfire and stuff like that. But we'd had a lovely meal of rabbit with apple and we'd uh, kind of gutted and, gutted and skinned the rabbit and then broken it up and cooked it inside tin foil with a bunch of apples. And it was a gorgeous meal. One of the best meals I've ever had to this day, actually, but I think partly because we had so much, um, so much involvement in the process that led up to it. But then this guy just ran at a pheasant and caught it. And he had seen how the leaders broke the necks of the rabbits. So he decided that he could probably break the neck of a pheasant. For those wondering, you essentially just hold it by the shoulders with one hand and pull its neck. And the neck is kind of, you're, you're just essentially grabbing someone's head and like strongly lifting upwards if they were strapped in so he decided to break the pheasant's neck and he was genuinely trying to be really nice and humane and everything you know just break it very cleanly and and just be nice and instead he kind of had a twisting motion and he just pulled and he just pulled the head off this pheasant whilst twisting and it just kind of spurted everywhere. And then when he was trying to squeeze it, he just squeezed some of the, I don't know what the fuck they were, like gutsied stuff out of the, out, out of the neck. So it, it kind of looked like a bottle of toothpaste. He really fucked this pheasant up. Um, I, I've never seen anything like it before in my life. He just ran down a pheasant like he was a dog, grabbed it, kind of, Twisty squeezed it, good portion of the head came off, and then in what was maybe an attempt to gut it, or was maybe an attempt just to make sure it was dead, he squeezed a bunch of stuff like toothpaste out of his neck. So, that was not particularly pleasant. Uh, and, 
as we discovered afterwards, pheasant isn't even that pleasant unless it's been hung for a while. I think pheasant's the kind of gamey meat where you need to, like, leave it for... I don't know, they generally hang them for a week or something, I think. So... So, yeah. That, I saw someone squeeze the guts out of a pheasant, like a thing of toothpaste. That's an image that I'll always remember.